Hello everyone, Arvot here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to go over all of the major changes in Season of Discovery Phase 2. Now Blizzard dropped this big video, it is 32 minutes long, not only covering the changes but going over into the details and elaborating on these changes as well. In this video I'm just going to go over all of the major changes and if you are interested in the specifics and into the details, I'll have this Blizzard's video in the pinned comment below. So for the first thing we have Nomegon. It is a next raid in the phase 2. It will be 10 player raid with total of 6 bosses. Bosses will have new mechanics and there will be over a hundred of new items. 3 times the number of epics than BFD had. So in BFD we had staff, uh, crossbow and hydra, the sword, the two hander sword. Now we can expect to see at least 9 of the 4 piece in there. We will have new item sets and these item sets will be different per armor type. So it's not, it's not like that cloth and uh, plate or leather will all have the same tier bonus of 1% hit or something like that. There will also be new fun items, some things that Blizzard teased are fun trinkets like uh, that's on use that will transform you into trog or something like that and also some cosmetics that won't have stats on them but is something that you can use for roleplay there will also be new currency that will be used to turn in for set items so instead of having an issue of multiple set items let's say dropping for rogues some of the same pieces now you will have currency so you can decide who you want to gear first in your raid group or anyone can roll for because anyone will be able to turn that currency for a tier item this is a welcome change in my opinion then there is some quality of life uh, skill books that will be added to the dungeons and some of the examples that we are given are increased blessing duration for paladins and rogues will be able to keep combat points while swapping the targets these are not the runes, these are just the skill books that you can use, uh, which means that they are not taking a rune slot. Next, this raid will be available from the week one, but the first two lockouts will be, will, will be one week long. So instead of a lockout every three days, it will be lockout once a week. And then we will have a new world buff from the raid. Next one is a really big topic, it's the runes. Now I won't go over the runes in this video, but that will be one of my next videos covering all the runes that Blizzard teased so far. But what we know is that each class will receive two new runes minimum, They'll, there will be more runes. But we know currently about two new runes per belt and boot slot. Um, with the exception of shamans that will also get the chest runes as a bonus uh, that will be focused for two hand shamans. So if you're interested in this, like and subscribe, and this will be one of my next videos. For PvP updates, there is a bunch of PvP updates. There is a new PvP event in STV. It will start on a timer every three hours, and there won't be any kind of resources needed. So it will always start every three hours on timer. Once it's done, you know, in three hours, next one starts. The duration will be 30 minutes. And STV zone will be covered with blood mist so that you know that it's dangerous area during um, that time. Zone will be free for all PvP. What that means is that you can kill players from your own faction. So it doesn't matter if you're alliance and you see another alliance player. You don't know, maybe that guy will jump you on and kill you. So this will be a really dangerous zone. Even more dangerous than STV used to be. Um, and I know that rogues are going to like this, especially in phase 2. Raid groups will have some kind of punishment, but we are not quite sure what that will be. So if people are grouping in raids so that they can gank, you know, individuals, solo players, um, I assume they will still be able to do so, but there will be some kind of punishment for that. There are no PvE objectives, however, there will be a boss wandering the area, that will be very strong and similar to Fell River in difficulty. So um, I don't know if the expectation is for anyone to kill the boss or just to run away from it. We will have to see. Killing players will drop the currency 
and the currency can be turned into class specific items and Urubashi Arena NPC. There will also be quests for Arati Basin Reputation. So I guess similar to um, Battle for Ashen Whale and Warsong Gulch Reputation. There are also two new mounts and there will be no world buff from the STV event. So the only world buff will be from the raid itself. Next topic is professions. Now I won't go into all of the details but there are a lot of changes to professions. There are new recipes for all non-gathering professions. There are new quest chains. There are new enchants. There are new items for alchemy and enchanting that will boost player power temporary. So for alchemy, you may have a different potion or an item that acts like a potion that not only restores your health and mana, but also boosts your attack power or spell power. And enchanters will be able to have similar items that will boost their power or restore mana or something like that. So these are all new items, not only uh, something that we already have. Blizzard wanted to make alchemy and enchanting uh, something that's more beneficial to the player, not only something that's gold-making profession. So we will have to see how fun and how strong that will be. Professions will be kept at uh, 225 skill level, and also no profession specialization will be available in phase 2. So no goblin and gnome engineering and no armor smithing or weapon smithing. Another PvP update for PvP matchmaking is groups of 5 and less will be matched together. This is for battlegrounds of course. Same for 5 plus groups. So if you have more than 5 players in your raid and you go into BG, there is um, more. There is a likely chance that you will face another pre-made group of 6 or more, or more players. And there is also a threshold if this queue is too long. So let's say you have 7 players in the pre-made or 10 players in the pre-made, but you wait too long for a BG because um, matchmaking cannot find another 10-man group, then this rule will be ignored and you will be faced with a non-pre-made. Couple of last things to note as a major changes is for leveling. You will have 50% experience boost for all characters between level 1 and 25. So if you decide to make an alt character, or if you did not play and you want to start playing in phase 2, you will have 50% boost for your first 25 levels, which is pretty nice. BFD will also give a lot of experience once completed, and Waylaid Supplies will give greatly increased uh, experience as well. And for additional notes for the end, Ashenville World Buff and BFD uh, buff, World Buff won't work above character level 39. What they also teased is new tech for finding and banning bots in, in Phase 2. They of course did not talk about what this uh, new tech is. However, they did say that they have something that they did not have before and they are planning to release it with the Phase 2. Last change that I have here for you is GDKP is no longer permitted. They said that they have a lot of ways to track if uh, GDKP was involved in the raid, uh, whether it's inside the raid trading or trading outside of the raid. So yeah, that's one of the big things that Blizzard is trying to do in the phase two. All right, this is all when it comes to major changes. Again, I'm going to go through the details in my future videos on every single of these major topics. So if you'd like to see that, please stay tuned and like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.